It started as a conversation with my oldest friend. 18 months of lockdown had left us longing for an adventure, a challenge which would take us out of our comfort zone and into the great outdoors. With global travel restricted, we had to look closer to home. Ride the Spine became that adventure. In September 2021, me and my friend Sam set out to bike pack down the spine of Wales, starting in Conway Castle on the north coast and finishing at Rossilli Bay on the south. We would follow an ancient Roman road known as San Helen. En route, we would attempt to summit the Welsh three peaks of Snowdon, Cader Idris, and Penavan. Our journey would involve over 25,000 feet of elevation gain, whilst navigating the most inhospitable, rugged and beautiful sections of the Welsh landscape. It was a chance to experience our home country like never before. Six days, four wheels, two friends, one epic 230 mile journey across the roof of Wales. Well, hopefully. How are you feeling? Day one. Nervous. Ready to go now though. <laughs> <laughs> Conway Castle, day one, 32 miles here to the summit of Snowdon. Tussle with some tarmac and soaked to the bone, we sought shelter from the unrelenting Welsh weather. One hour quickly turned into three, and with the forecast showing no signs of improving, we put common sense first and abandoned our ascent to Snowdon, rejoining the San Helen Trail. Route recalculated and gates navigated, we hopped straight out of the frying pan and into the fire. How happy are you to see uh, Darmac? It's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't know, that wasn't made for humans. <laughs> it's unpassable. Kamut, you've, you've done, a, done a blinder there. I think I would have been drier swimming uh, from north to south Wales. I am soaked. Shoes are ruined and 10 to 8 and we still don't know where we're sleeping. So that's going to be the fun part. Will we find ourselves a nice, dry, cosy place to sleep tonight? Yes or no? <laughs> so, we are here in Cumpernancho and this is Last Chance Saloon. Sunset, nine o'clock. We found a little almost tunnel to sleep in. Bed may have slipped. But a uh, bit cold, bit damp. Not great, not great for night one. What a disaster today's been. <laughs> that was a difficult night's sleep. Yeah, not the best I've ever had. Midges, rain. Yeah, what can you say about that? <laughs> Miles panic set in last night. Uh, we settled here. Flat, bit of cover, but yeah. Bivied it. We, uh, we had rain, but the midges, hideous. Gonna push on up to the top of the slate mine and rejoin San Helen. We're going to Dolgechli, potentially up Cadre, see what the weather says. Can't get any worse than day one, so let's go.
As we fled the mid-ridden tunnel to the top of the slate mine, I couldn't help but marvel at the scarred remains of our country's industrial past. Grey, desolate, uncompromising, this eerily beautiful landscape served as a humble reminder that despite yesterday's adversity, we actually had it easy. Spirits lifted by the sunshine, we made haste into Dolgethlai. A check of the weather showed rain and 50 mile an hour winds forecast on the summit of Cader Idris. Tentless and sleep deprived, we abandoned our plan to bivy on the mountain. Instead, we took a gamble, running five miles back in the opposite direction to seek overnight shelter in a bothy. It was a gamble in the sense that we were desperate, and apparently the bothy was locked. <laughs> Will the bothy be open? I'm thinking yes, I'm optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do if, it's, if, if it isn't? Uh, <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> anything but the midges. Anything but the midges. Oh. I don't think it's open. <laughs> oh. Is it open? <laughs> How are you feeling right now? Yeah, I just numb, I think, and no feelings. <laughs> just another sleepless night, I think. I've got nothing left. I feel like uh, Ian Beale off EastEnders. Got nothing left. Gamble to come back. Clearly not paid off. Bothy's locked. No way in. Not even forced entry. I'm just just dreading another night <laughs> sleeping in the woods. I don't know what to do anymore. With morale at rock bottom, we rode back into Dolgethly for the second time that day, not knowing where we were going to sleep. As the rain trickled down, we drowned our sorrows with a well in pint before I made some emergency phone calls. Thoughts? How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I think we'll have a good night's sleep in there. Despite it being very minimalist. <laughs> it's better than a cricket. What are our options this evening? Cricket pitch cover. I don't know what do you what do you call the what they bought, I don't know. Uh, or Yeah, I don't know what we had else on the cards. Not really much, did we? Bush. Ending in today with some renewed sense of optimism. Decent night's sleep in the uh, pod. Clean clothes, um, and the sun was out. So hopefully have a good day today. I think it's the longest day. Uh, gonna be tough, but haven't been able to appreciate what we cycled through so far because of the weather. So hoping uh, get a bit nicer conditions so we can actually enjoy this beautiful ride. But the morning routine is, uh, is great on me. So much stuff, so much little stuff. Got to pack away everything. Always takes, always takes longer than you think. But day three, let's go. <laughs> Leaving Snowdonia, we entered the Cambrian Mountains. Known as the last wilderness of Wales, it's a green desert of rolling hills with nothing to see but the land itself. It was beauty personified, and we planned on enjoying it.
Yes! The humble Bothy, simple in every sense of the word, devoid of basic amenities and surrounded by nothing but nature and beauty. It's simply an abandoned building, hidden away in the wilderness. A roof and four walls maintained purely to provide shelter from the elements. And for that, we were grateful. How are you feeling? Pooped. <laughs> yeah. It's a big day, wasn't it? Very big day. But glad we got a roof over our heads tonight. So that's good. Lovely spot. I've never slept in a bothy either before, so my first time. Appreciated. I think I appreciated the Welsh landscape today. The Cambrians were pretty impressive. Leaving Snowdonia pretty gorgeous. Tough, but good. First day, like I said, is I actually come to appreciate it. Uh, nice to have a warm roof over our heads as well. But yeah, good day. Good night's sleep and over the halfway point tomorrow. Happy days. Bit of a disrupted sleep, but it was uh, nice to have a roof over our heads after a savage day three. Day four, looking probably not the most difficult in terms of the terrain, uh, but it is absolutely pissing down, so we're going to get so So I'm not looking forward to this whatsoever. Do not want to leave the bothy. Yeah, today's going to be a long day. You're a you're a star. <laughs> I'm a star. <laughs> After saying goodbye to our overnight companion, Sheriff Tracker, we depart the Bothy and dive straight into some relentless forested climbs. After the route leveled out, the weather began to ease, and the reason why we undertook this adventure became evident once again. How are you feeling? Day four done. Easy day. <laughs> Turned out not to be so easy. I can't, I can't even remember what happened today. It's just a memory blank. Um, gates, fields, gates. Uh, and there's a mountain in there somewhere, I think. Look at this. Bed for tonight. Amazing. Day five, you know, good. Had a first bed in four days, stayed in the Cambrian Arms, lovely. Not looking forward to today, it's gonna to be pretty brutal. Uh, debating whether to go with Pen of Anne or not, see how the legs feel and see what the weather looks like. But 140 miles down, 80 to go, uh, two more days. <sighs> So this morning we made the long slog from Bilth to Bracken and now we're beginning our ascent up the gap to the summit of Penavan, which is covered in cloud. It is brutal, I am knackered and I don't think the views are going to be great but onwards we push. It was relentless, it was uncomfortable but with our pride at stake it was necessary.
After a two-hour battle against the worst of the Welsh weather, we finally made it to the summit of Penavan. One of the three peaks conquered and our pride restored, we got the compulsory summit shot before making a swift descent down to the car park. Penavan done? Done. I'm done. <laughs> Penavan is done. Get me over. Nice at the top though? Yeah, lovely views actually, yeah. See south all the way to Swansea. It's the first time I've ever not wanted to climb a mountain, but we're down. We're on the other side, the home stretch now. Gonna take a big chunk out of tomorrow rather than try to camp around here because it is disgusting. Disgusting! After a failed attempt to dry ourselves using a burger van generator, support arrived. Spirits lifted and bellies fueled, we lightened our bikes and both reluctantly agreed to make one final push back to Swansea. It's the lesser of two evils, I think. It's either camping out in the rain, bivvying out in the rain, or a masochistic 34 miles home. So we're going for the 34 miles home. Not gonna lie, more energy coming off Pedaban, they did go up it. But that was uh, a tough two and a half hours getting home. How are you feeling? Not too bad actually. When I woke up in filth this morning, I did not expect to be here in Swansea. So yeah, we've got in a big shift today. Over the top of Pedaban, horrendous conditions. So yeah, big day. Tomorrow we make the final push to Rossilli. Hopefully it won't be raining, but I know in this trip it will be. So uh, hey, good well shift, done, mate. good yeah. shift. Home. There's no place like it. Refreshed, revitalised and with the weather finally in our favour, the last 20 miles of our journey were an absolute dream. How would I describe that? That six days, uh, brutal but beautiful. That's how I describe it. Um, it was the best of Wales in the worst of weather. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What did we expect, really? Yeah, cycling through Wales. It was obviously going to be terrible <laughs> weather. Uh, what would you do again? Uh, yeah, should we go back up now? <laughs> I take a tent and I do it when it's not raining. <laughs> that's, that's honestly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'd say that's one of the toughest things I've done. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I definitely do it again. Definitely do it again. Yeah, epic scenery, amazing. And look at look at that. What up, mate? Uh, should have done ride this by in the Netherlands. That would have been easy, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, it was over. We had planned for the best but endured the worst. Things didn't go to plan, and there were times where we questioned what we were actually doing. <laughs> but in the midst of all of madness, there were those moments. <laughs> moments which made us smile. Moments which made us laugh. Oh, all right, Pat, what are you doing up here then? <laughs> which alongside the sheer beauty of the wonderful Welsh landscape, made it a journey we'll never forget. <laughs>